Edinburgh Comic Convention. Uh, it's good to see a huge crowd here. Um, my friend Jane said that this is much better than the London Con she was at a couple of weeks ago. So there you are. Um, we're going to talk uh, a wee bit about uh, rebooting characters. Um, as, as we all know, um, America did not invent the, the comic book that was Glasgow, uh, with the Glasgow Looking Glass. And if you don't believe me, I'm speaking about that in the National Library of Scotland on the 9th of June. Um, no, it's, it's all true, it's all true. Uh, however, America did uh, engage the attention of the whole world uh, over the last 75 years with its iconic characters. Um, starting with DC and coming up originally second place, the Marvel heroes, particularly in the 60s. Now Marvel is one of the biggest publishing companies in the world with uh, record-breaking uh, movies. Uh, now in collaboration with Disney, as you can tell when you look at Thor and the professor's books all have the Disney logo on them. Um, so I'm just going to talk to my two guests about, about uh, how we managed to keep characters going for 75 years, how things go from the brilliant 1960s Batman to the very, very dark and sinister Batman we've got just now, and, and then the 60s one comes back again. Uh, I'm going to get my guests to introduce themselves. We've got a slight change to the, the programme here, but uh, this is Mike McCone. Mike, uh, give us a wee brief resume of your career so far. Oh my goodness. Um, brief. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started drawing comics in about uh, 1988. Um, I'm from Newcastle originally, took my portfolio down to London, showed someone from DC Comics and uh, they gave me a job and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I've drawn things like Spider-Man and Teen Titans and Exiles and stuff like that. Constant reinvention. I was once interviewing Arthur Adams and I said, Arthur, how did, how did you get a job with Marvel? He said, oh, I was working in Pizza Land and I sent them some artwork. <laughs> I said, no, can you go on a wee bit longer? No, that was it, that was the story. And yourself? Uh, my name is Peter Wynn. I've been working in comics since 2009, so I'm a lot newer in comics, but uh, I'm originally from Hawaii, and I got my start through a Jim Lee talent search competition back in 2006, and uh, I went on to work in animation on Wolverine and the X-Men, I've done Wolverines for Marvel, and I've done Secret Six and Black Widow and are there, there any, uh, are there any projects you've worked on with these major companies that you especially like? No. <laughs> <laughs> and Adams too. Um, I mean, I know you, you I, probably like everything, but... I, I like everything when I begin, and everything seems exciting and new, and, and I'm going to change the world. And then after the first issue, I realise, no, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get off. <laughs> I uh, agree, it's on the same way. The first page is so exciting and the, the 20th page is so... <laughs> so uh, is, it, is there anything you found difficult to work on? Is there any character you just couldn't get into at all? I, in general, I, I find very difficult to, to do the kind of iconic characters like um, Superman and Captain America because they're so wholesome and handsome. And, and I'm English, so I'm, I'm kind of... I, I like the Hobbit. <laughs> Yeah, they're, you know, they're these big, serious, very serious uh, characters. So sometimes I, f I find it difficult to keep a straight face when I'm doing that kind of, you know, apple pie, um, truth, justice, and the American way kind of thing. Uh, so I, I prefer the whole kind of thing and, and Bizarro. Sort of. Kevin and Neil always wanted to do Bizarro, but the DC told them his art was too. Um, scary for them, so we didn't want to do it. It's a true, true story. Um, anything you tackled that you really couldn't get yourself into? Well, I, I worked on the Wolverines book, and then I practiced Wolverine for a long time because I, I have a high expectation of what Wolverine looks like. And when I got to my issue, he wasn't—he actually passed away. Spoiler alert! And so I—I well, I drew him as a. You didn't hear that. At a, at a Matthew statue, and, you know, all the pressure was off. But yeah, I think characters that I grew up with that I really truly love, I, I haven't really figured out their vision yet. So I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm looking for. And it takes a while, it takes me a long couple issues to really figure out what, how I'm gonna draw this specific character. Because I think I like him too much, maybe. Yeah, so you're too close to it. Yeah. Can't see the wood for the trees kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you like working? I, I mean, do you, do you 
do you like planning everything out beforehand? Uh, Dave Sim once told me he drew page one and he drew page two. That was the way he worked. That, that's exactly the way I work. I try not to thumbnail. Um, oh, you don't even thumbnail? No. Well, generally I'm working full script now. So all of the panels have a, a clear description of what, what's inside them. So it, it takes away some of the creativity, but it also takes away some of the, the, the work. So you don't really have to thumbnail because there are five panels with a clear description of what's happening in each of them. Um, so yeah, I start on page one, panel one, and, and just work through it until the end. Um, I, when I was younger, I used to jump all over the place thinking it would go faster if I drew it that way, and it never did. So, um, so now I'm a plotter. I just, I just, it's like digging tunnels. <laughs> Dave, Dave Stevens uh, on Rocketeer um, had a page for I think it was three years with the dog uninked because he just couldn't get around to the dog. He'd done all the Rocketeer figures, he'd done some of the backgrounds, but the dog remained in pencil for three years. Do you do you plan everything out? Or? Yeah, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out, and every issue I do is a different process. Yeah. And I also have peers like Jim Chung telling me how to do it differently each time, so every step is a new learning, learning but slower process. So maybe I need to just skip a couple steps like Mike is doing. Yes, and just get to it in. Just, just jump in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the anti-Jim Chung. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, but we don't want two people exactly the same. Right? Now, Reboot, um, have you liked what happened to, say, Guardians of the Galaxy since its first appearance in Marvel Superheroes? I did, because uh, I'm friends with Dan and Andy, who, uh, who rebooted it, even though you know, Dennis takes credit. Well, he didn't take the credit, but I think he, um, he is credited with the reboot even though it was Dan. It was Dan, Dan yeah. Andy Lanning. Um, and I, I, I much enjoyed, uh, much more enjoyed their Guardians of the Galaxy than the original one, because they all seemed kind of strange. And Did you even read the original? Sorry? Did you even read the original? I didn't read it, the original. Oh, you, you weren't born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is that's that's probably weekend, true, yes. I get this. When were you born? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it, it was completely different to what we've got just now. Uh, apart from the fact that there were different characters with different names doing different things, it's exactly the same. I, I remember what they looked like, but I didn't read it. I was Gene Cole, because you couldn't read. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when, he was in, when he was in the womb, he found it difficult to get a comic shop. Um, <laughs> is there franchises that you've liked what they did and what... You, ones you didn't like what they did. Did you like the Watchmen film, for example? I, I like It was okay. Uh, it was okay? It was okay, but there, there's such a high standard set by, by the graphic novel that it could have been brilliant and it still wouldn't have matched um, uh, the, the 12 issues. Because 12 issues, as I understand it, Alan Moore specifically tried to do things that could only be achieved in comics, and it's very difficult to translate that into film. Yeah. No, I, I did enjoy it. It was, it was a grand accomplishment, considering what it could have been, the mess yeah. it could have been. Um, but I haven't enjoyed anything else the director's done. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I don't hold up much hope for the uh, Superman Batman. Well, speaking of Batman, Batman's been the most, in my experience, reinvented character. There was the zany science fiction stuff in the 50s. There was the, the funny and still enduring stuff from the 60s. Mm -hmm. There's Frank Miller's take with the brilliant Batman Year One, which I think is oh. about the best Batman graphic novel. Dave Matsu Kelly is just amazing, and uh -huh. Frank Miller was still sane at the time. Um, was he? Uh, well, he certainly isn't now. Um, what, what Batman do you like? What Batman did you identify with? When I was growing up, we didn't have DC Comics. You didn't have DC? Newcastle. They just started... Uh, just had Viz? Oh, I thought you meant... <laughs> When you were growing up at the turn of the century, or? At the turn of the 20th century. Go on, go on, sorry. So we, they just didn't, the news agents didn't carry DC Comics in, uh, in Newcastle. Really? Uh, so I grew up with Marvel Comics, and the first Batman that I read was Dark Knight Returns. Really? When, when Frank first showed glimpses. of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was kind of my favorite. The only other Batman I'd, I'd seen was the television show, and I loved that. Yeah. I loved that. Why do you think it endures the television show? Because it does. They've just reissued it in Blu-ray. Yeah, I just think it looks like they were having fun. You know? it's, I think of it as like it's a mad, 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 mad world. 
to Saturn. Um, and it, it's bright and I think, I don't know, I just, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I think it's very uplifting and, and positive and cheerful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which the new Dark Knight certainly isn't. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, but it was kind of like, the, it was all its time, obviously. But um, as you say, it was very positive. The bad guys didn't really hurt anyone too much. Batman didn't really yeah. hurt anyone too much. Um, the shark repellent. Yeah, shark repellent, shark yeah, very important. Shark repellent, not shark. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't deadly. <laughs> shark do you, do you have a, are you following what I'm saying, do you, do you, do you like one particular Batman as yeah, opposed to another? Yeah, I, I grew up on the Bruce Tim animated series. Batman. Oh, no, that was good. Yeah, and I, would, I come home every day after school in Hawaii and just watch Bruce Tim. I mean, it was, it was, it's a classic to me. I mean, it's, you know, so. and, and you worked in animation, did that inspire you at all? That it did, um, but I worked on X-Men, so there, it wasn't as, um, thematic maybe as you know that series was yeah. it's so hard to live up to but the producer of that show went on to produce our show as well all right uh, his name was Boyd Kirkland and he, he directed like the Poison Ivy first episode yeah he went on to do X-Men Evolution and then he went on to do our show and uh, he's a great director he, he passed away a couple years ago oh did he die yeah, but he was he was very uh, he was the first one to really hire me and teach me and take me under his wing where was the office based? Oh god, it was in Burbank, but it was like five animators in this tiny room with no air conditioning. It was like a, it was a packing house, like it was really tiny. And I sat on the floor actually, I didn't have a desk. You sat on the floor? Yeah. Very high take, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and that's how we did the cartoon. It was very, 26 episodes in like one summer, straight out of school. It's very tiny and it's just like great learning experience. Did you have one computer between the five of you or something like that? We actually did. No, for real. Yeah. I thought it was being sarcastic. <laughs> and I was the only one that knew how to use it. Was it, was it Windows or Mac? Huh? Was it Windows or Mac? It was, uh, I forgot. I think it's Windows. It's Windows. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, you know, the, the, we, we had three directors next door and then four or five storyboard artists in one room and the producer in another room and she was just yelling at us all day and it was just like this happy, uncohesive family. I mean, it was a lot of fun, but Boyd was really good. And he, he would always tell me stories about Bruce Tim and you know, a lot of things I grew up with. I got to work with him and it was just a great experience. I think. Do, would you prefer to be in animation, uh, sitting on the floor, or do you prefer <laughs> comics? I sit on the floor when I draw comics too. <laughs> <laughs> You're just in that zone now? Yeah. No, I, I think they're to each their own. Um, I like both. Uh, animation is a team effort. I think comics is like a five-man team, so whoever screws up, you know who screws up. Like if it's the inker, if it's a colorist, or if it's a writer, I mean, the least people on the team will know. But in animation, it's like, you know, we've got to send it overseas, and that's a whole other team, and if, that, if the overseas screws up, then we have to... So I feel like you don't get as much credit in animation, per se, you just kind of get... Like it was hard for me to explain to my parents exactly what I did, and be like, you know that one section in that one part of the cartoon? That's me. But that, that other part, the legs, that's not me. You know? That's like, I want to take full credit, I think. So, so comics is better for you in that way? In a way, yeah. So they can blame me directly. Yeah. Or blame the Inca. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my friend uh, Mike Doherty grew up in Glasgow uh, with an ambition to draw Conan the Barbarian. So he went on to draw Conan the Barbarian. And he showed me this beautiful uh, pencil page with this elaborate skyscape and stars and this and the next thing, it came back from this South American Inca black. It just inked out the whole thing. Fortunately, we have a photocopy of the way he originally drew it. Um, do you have any favourite artists yourself? Who, do, who, who inspires you? Peter Wynn, of course. Well, apart from Peter. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, no, not, not so much now, actually. I don't really read comics anymore, so I don't see a lot. I find this a bit professional, um, yeah. But uh, Scotland's own Frank Wiley um, oh, yeah. is, is phenomenal, phenomenal. Just, he does things that I can't even... I don't know how he does it, and I should, because I get paid to do this. And I still don't know how he does it. Um, his his uh, global perspective is just unreal. It is, it's amazing. Um, Frank Wiley is... Uh, real name is Vince Deegan, um, just in case you don't know. It, the Americans didn't realise Frank Quitely was a pun, um, so he just kept the name. Um, and his wife is now... Quite, quite frankly, it's ridiculous. 
his wife's now wrecking certified if you call him Frank. Is he just going through that? And Hawaiians don't get the discipline. Um, well, uh, I knew I heard of it before, but you reconfirmed that I forgot. <laughs> and I, yeah, I like, well, anyway. We were, we were moving shop years ago, and I wanted Vincent just to draw a wee floor plan of a Gale Street and see where the new shop was. This three-dimensional aerial shop of the uh, Trongate came back, and Vin handed it over and he goes, is that okay? I said, is that okay? I want to buy it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, Vin could just see in 3D. Uh, it's just uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, he is, of course, about four months late with his next comic, but uh, he can still see in 3D. Yeah, I saw the, uh, the documentary he made uh, last year, I think. Yeah, but he spends most of the time on the roof. It was the strangest thing I've really? ever seen. <laughs> I've seen it, no. I did not see it, no. It, it's like David Lynch directing uh, a movie about a comic god. It's just, he sleeps on the floor, he stays in his studio until he's finished with age. And then he sleeps on the floor with a cushion under his head, and then goes drinking coffee with his mates. And he goes for a shower in Glasgow Central. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't show a lot of him drawing. I, I went into the studio one day and he was he was doing this panel and I said, oh, that's very interesting. Then you're kind of in a kind of Mike Kaluta mode and we had to talk about Mike Kaluta and blah, blah, blah. And it was, it was Batman and I said, uh, by the way, Vin, what issue is this? He says, it's issue two. I said, is that not due out Thursday? He goes, yeah. The phone rang and it was DC Comics looking for the, the looking for the book and I made a swift exit. Um, but it's still wonderful. Um, you do you have favourite artists or the people you admire apart from the animation guys and all that? Uh, Mike McCone, of course. And then, uh, oh, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. present company accepted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I do. You know, I'm still kind of new, so I still do read comics, and I I enjoy it. And my my peers tease me about it. They they call me encyclopedia sometimes because I I'm such a nerd. But when they need reference, you know, who do they come to? They come to right? you. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, uh, but I, I like, uh, I like Olivia Coppell, I like, um, Jim Chung. Yeah, Jim Chung. And I hate to admit it, but I'm a jerk. <laughs> and, you know, I like, I, I get inspired, it changes every week. So, um, but yeah. Costume-wise, and costumes are another thing that have changed. Even Batman, uh, Cameron Fentino reinvented Batman's costume uh, about 66 uh, in Detective Comics. Is there any costumes you you like that you think are just amazing designs? Uh, Daredevil, of course, started off with um, a Bill Everett design with the yellow-type costume, and then Wally Wood redesigned it into that classic uh, red costume. Is there any anything you like there, or any costumes you don't like, you think are ridiculous? <laughs> There's lots of costumes I don't like. Um, I like uh, uh, Alan Davis's Captain Britain costume, yes. which is, is genius. Is it because you're British? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think it might be. Alan bought my paint, so he has to say he likes Alan Davis. <laughs> but um, just to be able to get something as, as awkward as a Union Jack onto a costume and make it look yeah, so good. Yeah, that is pretty sick. It's, know, very, it's very iconic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I really dislike the original Captain Britain costume. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it was all put together. It stands wise from Newcastle. Yeah, and, uh, Star Shields. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And, and he wanted to... Uh, he always wanted to publish in Britain, which is why I established Marvel UK. Uh -huh. um, so they needed a character, and of course, Stan gets Chris Claremont because he was born in England for about three minutes, and Herb Trimpey, who I think had, had been in England for about half an hour on the way to the continent, <laughs> and they put together the original. So there was Bobbies with Daft Helmets and things like that. So it was nice when they handed it to Alan, and, and uh -huh. things became a bit better. Yeah. Um... I think Alan is, is he's probably the, to me the best superhero artist since since Neil Adams probably is that good and he's completely undersung and underused um, I think because he underplays his own talents and his own abilities so much um, if he was uh, interested a little bit more in his in self promotion he's, I hate to say he's too person, modest yeah if he if he was American he'd be held in the kind of regard that you know Neil Adams was I agree held in, I think he's phenomenal. Um, and he's such a nice... I'm in Captain Britain, you know, there's, there's McShane's, uh, that's, that, was, that was my flat, because Alan was up there, yeah, yeah. So I've got a fondness for Captain Britain. Yeah, yeah. and they were great stories, especially when I was... They probably saved me from, from getting out of reading comics, because I was kind of bored with American superhero comics around the early 80s, and then Alan Moore started writing 
Paul Vermont and Captain Britain. And so I, did you buy Warrior? And I did. I love Warrior. I didn't understand much of it. <laughs> um, like Father Shando, I still I can't make him until. No, I couldn't tell you the story. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but um, Marvel Man was just just seemed several steps ahead of where American comics were, um, and that just that kept my interest long enough to to actually kind of get me over the hurdle of wanting to draw. Did, did you ever see Warrior, uh, from which Marvel Man and V for Vendetta came? No, I, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, well, we're not talking to you anymore. Born, <laughs> so, uh, born yesterday. <laughs> what are we talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> so, back to my original question. Costumes, is there any costume recently, design you thought was good? Recently, Spider-Gwen. I think it's a great costume. You don't like it? I think, like, in England, if she was real, she wouldn't be allowed in a bank with a hood on. Uh, so, I guess so. But you know, it's a hoodie. Any, but anything with a hoodie to me is Scarlet Spider is well, a up teenager. Yeah, I know. You like hoodies? <laughs> no, I like <laughs> Scarlet Spider is a great color, but it's arguable. I, mean. no, I like I like Spider Girl. Just being facetious. Yeah. yeah. I think you're about the eyes though. Yeah, I don't, yeah, they're spray painted, right? Yeah. But that, I don't like that either. Yeah. That's why I always draw her on mass. But I like the, I like the colors. Any costume you thought was absolutely ridiculous over the years? Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> big long, big long <laughs> list here. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> Just in case you get sacked, yeah. <laughs> anything with pouches? Or, you know, I, I kind of... I, I like pouches. I like the Jim Lee X-Men a lot. Yeah. I like Omega Red. He has a ton of weird capsules everywhere. And, like, I didn't like Cyclops God. Cyclops with what? Cyclops was wearing a God. A garter. All oh, right. Uh, I'll, I'll translate from Newcastle for you. Garter. Garter. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a fake one. <laughs> no, I do like. I like the garter. I draw it all the time. I don't know why, but it's part of the costume. It breaks up the blue, I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's uh, you know th that's a bias too because I think the soldier I grew up in that era. But I, not that I'm gonna draw a gazillion pouches on all my superheroes, but. When I draw it, I, I draw the pouches because without them, they don't represent the 90s to me. Because, yeah. What yeah. is like, what's keeping them? I don't, I don't know. Cell phones and girls' numbers. Cell phone. I think it's cell phone. I'll translate from Hawaiian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, were on a, we were in France at, uh, in, in Angoulême, and uh, Grant Morrison had to get translated into English so the French translator could translate him into French. <laughs> And uh, Grant and I met uh, Bob, uh, no, not Bob, not Bob Kane, um, uh, Batman, who, who acted Batman? Uh, Adam, West. Adam West. We met Adam West one day, and it was quite clear from Adam's expression he didn't understand one <laughs> word Grant was saying to him. Um, <laughs> and, and Alan Grant went to South America one day, and, he, and Adam West was there. And, um, Alan went up and said, hello, I'm the author of Batman, uh, blah, blah, blah. And sales went up to 300,000, blah, 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 blah. And Adam West looked up and said, I'm very grateful to be in your country. <laughs> <laughs> so, comics is full of translation problems. Um, do you read any foreign comics? Do you read French stuff or anything like that? Mobius, uh, Metal yeah, I, I, I lived in Spain for three years. All right. And, um, what struck me was that you can buy graphic albums pretty much anywhere. Um, and in purple stations. Yeah. And, you know, um, so I didn't understand a lot of it, like uh, Lava Witch. Oh yes. Uh, I loved looking at it, but like, I didn't yeah. you follow the story, not really uh, read it. And there was a, I mean, I'm still searching for this, and I believe they're reprinting it. Uh, it's a, I think it's an Italian strip called Dita Lupe. Oh, my, my, my friend who's an expert has just left the yeah. convention because he had to go somewhere. <laughs> it's a good video. Right. Um, it was printed in, I think, a, a comic called Tripwire. Oh, Tripod, yeah. In, in uh -huh. the 80s, I guess. Yeah. In the 90s. And I think oh, that I, rings a bell now. I and yeah. IDW are going to reprint it next year. Oh, okay. So I'm really looking forward to it because the artwork is incredible. Okay. Um, it's so much better than. You know, Almost of, anything. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to ripping that off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, uh, if, if you can't do it, trace it. I think that was Wally Wood said that. Um, European comics, have, have uh, you seen that scene? Yeah, I mean, uh, I love them, but I also don't know. I do like to, you know, I like going to, I went, I'd visit, I'd buy them all, and I, I couldn't carry them back, but I, I tried anyway, but I just don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great artists, obviously. Humanoids, like humanoids. I've never seen that. Well, I'm bad with names. Like, yeah. Uh, 
Well, Mobius is uh, a, a very influential artist. Um, he, he, he did uh, the Silver Surfer, actually, with Stan Lee. Yeah, he did two issues of Silver Surfer. He drew better than I saw anyone's ever drawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. Mobius, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's his book? It's no. a publishing company. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Meta Lulong and, and uh, I can't remember the other magazine, it was Echo de Savannes, and that uh, came out as a that group of um, French artists. Um, apart from superheroes, would you like to do something non superhero -y? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't really, I don't really want to draw interiors anymore for um, Marvel and DC. So right now I'm just drawing covers and uh, I do a lot of stuff for the licensing. Oh well, yes, designs so, and, and such like. Yeah, everything you see on things like um, you know, Lego um, or. Um, Boxes or quilts. Um, that, that's some of my stuff. All right. Okay. So I do that. And, um, what do you think of the? I mean, talking about reboots. What do you think of Lego doing all these superheroes? Um, I loved well, it. I, I have I, to I say. I just bought the, uh, the Slave One Lego, so I'm not biased. <laughs> um, I, w I really hate the fact that they used the helicarrier from the phone. They should have used the old fat bellied helicarrier, but that's just me. Um, it is. Kind of, it's very strange how ubiquitous. Marvel characters have become over the last few years since Disney have, um, <laughs> bought the company. Um, now they're everywhere. It's everywhere. Just, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's insane. It is. It's insane. Just when I want to leave. <laughs> they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Have you, did you like the Lego take on superheroes? You mean the, the uh, Lego movie, movie and the, the, the Batman and all that stuff? Are you mouthing the words to me right now? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's that song you got. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. I mean, they, they made it this awesome comeback, you know, but I, I grew up with Legos. I, I don't buy the new Legos, but I, you know, I should. Yeah, the, the Batman Tumblr is incredible. Yeah? Yeah. I don't, I'm not as I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> you put, you're on a permanent vacation. Tell them where you go next. Uh, Austria, <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> His life was a permanent vacation. I'll need to find a hanky, I'm, I'm so tearful for him. The Hawaiians are always relaxed, you know? So, yeah. so you get this misconception that I don't work, but I do work. Yeah. Is, it, is there a scene in Hawaii? I mean, is for there comics? a comic scene? Is there an indie scene or anything? No, like? you know in comics it's uh, a lot of anime and manga. It's Kamen Rider and Dragon Ball Z. And All right. There's a lot of like used toy shops, and there's not that many comic book uh, fans, but there is a new show. They're just they're opening a new show in September. Really? Yeah, it's it's a guy that, the guy that does amazing Las Vegas. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Jimmy J. So yeah. um, I'm excited to see it because I don't know what the turnout's gonna be like. Yeah. But I definitely want to be there for what it. Oh yeah, you yeah. have you'll have to be there. Yeah. Because I want to be promoted as the uh, Hawaiian comic artist. Of course. Yeah. Shameless self promotion. Have I shown you my book about Edinburgh? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I would get along quite well. <laughs> You're Robert Burns. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, no, that's my name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay, it's, it's a small print. Um, I forget what I was going to ask. Uh, so, how did you how did you get uh, in touch with the Jim Lee thing that you you won the competition? Kind of? Uh, you know, growing up, like a lot of my summers were spent in the one comic book shop we have on the island, and he was just he would let me go through all the issues and stuff. And so, I, I was a huge comic book fan, but I was alone in my school. And so, I always wanted to do comics, but my mom had always told me not to because she thought I was going to be a caricature artist on the beach. And so she's like, don't do it, don't do any of that. So I put it aside until I got to college and uh, I saw the competition. I didn't think I was going to enter, but then something happened and I did it. It was my first sequentials ever. And I what did you to do for it? A couple of pages or something? I did. I lied actually. I, it was three pages and they asked me how long it took and I said a page a day, but it took me eight days to do it. <laughs> And I worked day and night. I skipped all my classes, and uh, I failed art history to do it. And uh, that's kind of funny. You failed art, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, but uh, I submitted it, and this editor, he told me that they were messy and they were not ready, and you have a lot to learn. And then I think Jim went through the pile and he pulled it out, and he made me a finalist. And he said, "You, you have potential. You're going to try again. And we're going to test you against these other three. 
And I actually didn't make it, but it, it helped me open my network, and that's how I really truly got my story. Yeah, that's good. He's a nice, he's a nice fellow, Jim. Yeah, he is nice. He doesn't know who I am anymore, but he remembers. I just saw him hiking, and he, he just anyway. We were, in, we were. He, I went to the Bat Caves and at the Adam West Bat Caves, the, the, where they filmed it, and I walked to the Bat Caves, and he was standing there with his family. And I said hi, and he didn't recognize me, so I pretended not to recognize him. After you said hi? Yeah. Well, I just said, like, hi. And he's like, uh, hi. And then I'm like, okay, well, nice. have a great hike. I, I think you've interpreted it wrong. He's there going, God, I wish you could draw like that guy. <laughs> That's what he was really saying. And I, I had no idea it was the Adam West Bat Caves, but I later found out that he knew it was the Adam West Bat Caves, and that's why he took his family. But I just said to my phone, take me to the nearest hike, and it happened to be the Adam West Bat Caves. And so, that's good. it's just weird, like, we have a weird, he like gave me my start, but he doesn't remember me, and then now he saw me again, and I think someone told him later, and I was like, that's really weird. It's a really a weird anything. He is very nice, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a busy man. Yeah, he is. Um, when, what was your background? Did, did you did you study art or? Well, I went to law college in um, in South Shields. Uh huh. But uh, I didn't I didn't really study. I learned to drink and I got rejected by women. Oh well, that, that, I think that's a common uh, thing in comic book artists uh, going way back to Bill Everett. Yeah. Um, I I can't remember drawing much of anything in college. Um, were you into Were you into Viz? I was, but I was a bit of a bit of a snob. What did um, you major in? Uh, design, I think. Design? Yeah, I think so. Oh wow! They, I mean, it's obviously made a big impression on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the northeast. As long as I wasn't in a coal mine, I didn't really care what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, uh, large ambitions in the northeast, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the first time I met Grant Morrison, sorry, uh, Mark Millar, he said. He said, congratulations on not becoming a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, you've got to have something to aspire to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's done quite well. He can't be here today because he's signing in Waterstones in Glasgow. Really? Yeah. I thought he was like Scrooge McDuck just doing a backstroke in his room. No, he's, 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 he's shamelessly self promoting. Did I tell you I've got a book out? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I think it's about time for some questions from the audience. Um, I, I know we started talking about reboots and we did actually talk about that subject, but obviously, obviously uh, no subject is barred. Um, except, like, tax except tax returns. If there's any here from HMRC, go and get the money from Starbucks. Um, if you just put your hand up, we've got a mic for you here. There we go, I don't mean Mike McCohen. <laughs> Is there any um, variants from the Sexist TV show outside of the regulars who would like to see it in a reboot of comics? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the Sexist Six comics, I'm talking about the, uh, the DC comics itself, the Batman comics itself. Or you mean bring the characters into the proper DC universe? Yeah, like Bootworm, the Con of Gum, those kind of characters. Is there anyone you would like to see now updated? I mean, I thought Grant Morrison would be. Well, until you never know what he's going to do next. He's, he's I'm not sure he knows what he's going to do. No, I'm not sure he does. Um, well, there's so many universes now. Yeah. Um, with right. DCM all. Well, the question is that. to bring TV into. To bring the, the characters from the TV series into the regular uh, DC universe, as opposed to the comic, which is based on the 60s. I mean, Harley Quinn is from yeah. the animated series first. Yeah. She was brought in, she's wildly popular. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why not. They, they're going to do it anyway, I feel like. Yeah. Like Felicity from Arrow. She existed in the comics, but she's a different persona uh -huh. in that show, and she's awesome. Yeah. So they're going to bring her in, too. I mean, I don't watch Gotham, per se. I do. You do? You, do you like Gotham? I thought Gotham was a bit dismal. Well, I, did, I didn't watch it, but then I did some work for the TV show. Right. Uh, and I told, I told him I did watch it. <laughs> so I didn't watch it, he never saw it over two days. So he lied about how long it took to draw. He lied about everything else. <laughs> I, I thought I'd just get away with it. I thought it'd be nice and say, oh yeah, what's this show? <laughs> and then they started asking me questions, referring to the show. Oh, that was cheeky of them, man. Eh? Oh, yeah. It's like homework. It's like homework. So, um, I watched it and I didn't like it. No, I liked it and I didn't like it. And now I'm not sure. I'm somewhere in the middle. I think I like some of it, but not all of it. But I think 
they seem to be crazy not to take advantage of what's happening in the TV shows and bring the new comedy. Yeah. Crazy, why not? It's all made up anyway. Yeah. In case you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you've, you've devastated them now. Uh, do you like any of these um, current DC shows? Uh, Arrow, Gotham? Uh, I, I do watch, I love The Flash, and I, I think it's a bit simplistic, but it's fun. It's true to the character, I think. And, and I also watch Arrow, and I, and I watch Season 1 of S.H.I.E.L.D. too. I season like, 1 of S.H.I.E.L.D. was good. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was fun. I, the thing with me is that if it's not on Netflix or the CW app, I can't watch it. I don't really have a TV, so... I don't know. Yeah, so, so how are you watching? So. Hotel rooms. Oh, hotel, hotel rooms. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I live in hotels. That's Mike is quite the traveler, and that's for the last 80 months I've lived in hotels going from convention. Well, it saves you hoovering. You it know. does. It does. So. It saves a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How do you carry around your comic collection? It's actually in a, in a storage facility in the desert in San Diego. Um, and it is in the air conditioning, so I'm <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of shame it's in. It, it may be slightly dried out, perhaps? Maybe, yeah. But, um, it's comic you know, you know, you download whatever you need. So, uh, I believe there's a thing called BitTorrent as well, which I wouldn't condone. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in a pinch. In a pinch. If you need, if you need a crib. <laughs> if you need to watch any episodes of Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, what do you think of Netflix doing the Marvel deal with Daredevil and I can't remember what the other three are. Uh, I think it's Luke Cage and Jessica... Rabbit. No, not Jessica. Rabbit. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit. I can't remember, but what, what do you think of Netflix getting into the scene like that? I think it's smart. I think it's, you know, I, mean, I, I only watch Netflix, and I'm sure there's other people that only watch Netflix too. And they're covering their bases. they got movies, TV, and they've got Netflix only. And I don't see why not. It's quite a change from a few years ago when everything was dominated by half a dozen major channels, and now you've got the likes yeah. of Netflix. And I, I think they're choosing characters that are urban characters that are easy to produce, not, not a lot of special effects are needed, but they can still tell the story. That they need. That's so, true. Yeah. That's true. They're kind of, they're kind of almost non super yeah. characters. Like Daredevil, I mean, how much... He's blind. Yeah. <laughs> how much effects do you need? I didn't watch it yet. No, no spoiler. Alert, so. Did you like the original movie? I... I didn't. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody asked me, like, uh, what I thought about Ben Affleck as Batman, and I said, well, I, I'm one of those people that I'm going to wait to see how it is. But we do have some evidence of him playing an urban character in the past that wasn't so well. And, and, it, and I think maybe he might have learned from those mistakes, but I think they're, you know, so. I did like that. Is that scene legit where he, like, uses the rain to, like, kiss? Oh, that's terrific, that yeah, scene. I, I think. thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. And the only thing I kind of remember from that movie. Yeah, that's, that is a terrific scene. Does he do that in real life? Like, take girls in the rain and then... <laughs> I don't know. Are we, are we talking about Mike or uh, Matt Murdoch? Mike does that. Uh, but Daredevil. <laughs> Did you like the original Daredevil movie? I've got such a bad memory. I can I'm very fond of it, actually. I think I that scene in the rain was terrific. But I can barely remember. It was a nice visual. I remember yeah. that, yeah. 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 It, was, it was nice. But honestly, I don't, I don't remember the rest of it, which is not a good thing. Ben Affleck is such a plank. He's just he's so yeah. wooden. He's a great director. You're more of a Matt Damon guy. I... I, I, pr I yeah. yeah, I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's much prettier. <laughs> well, he's from Newcastle. Um, <laughs> any other questions, sir? Just put your hand up. Mike's floating around here. <laughs> with DC going pretty much crazy with the TV shows right now, is there any other kind of character that you'd like to see on the TV? On the TV? Well, you know they're bringing Hot Girl to the screen. And, oh, are yeah, they? I didn't well, know that. Well, they're doing like a Brave and Bold series. And uh, Hot Girl, Firestorm, um, The Atom was introduced this year. So they're kind of making anyone who's not Superman or Batman. And I love, I love DC D-listers. Like I don't, they're not A-listers. I, I consider the Trinity A-listers, but I, I want to see like Red Tornado. I love those or Moana Beast and all these weird, you know. Oh yeah. I love those guys. Vibe. Vibe. Vibe is actually. On the flash already. Really? But not with his vibing powers. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if he's not getting his powers, what, what, what does he do? Uh, he's a scientist. He's very smart. All right. Yeah. Okay. You should watch it. It's so good. We'll get it on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, any characters you fancy seeing, Mike? Um, on the small screen, not really. Um, 
This looks kind of cool to see uh, New Gods if they made a movie. Oh yeah, yeah. dude, I'm down. Devil Dinosaur. Devil um, Dinosaur? Yeah. I know what it is, but I just, I'm just confused. A red T-Rex, I just want to see that. Be a good cartoon, I think. It would work. That's a Photoshop alter of Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to see a good Judge Dredd one. I think there's potential. I like the Alex Gardner one. Uh, I want to see a New Mutants movie. Like, 1980s, Danny Moonstar, Valkyrie. Yeah, I want magic with her soul sword and limbo. And, yeah, you know, I want, and there's, there's everything in there, I think. And a Vietnamese Mutant. <clears throat> I'd like to say something. Anything that I've, I've had a hand in creating, is that I get paid? <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I like the way you know, always think to other people. That's so what are, the, what are the options then? What, what do you... Uh... Oh, God. Well, I, I just did a book called Justice League United. Yeah. We created a Canadian character called Equinox. So I'm praying she's at least mentioned in the Batman movie. <laughs> and you'll get a few bucks. Uh, a few bucks, well, yes. Doing good. Yeah. But totally self interested. Did I tell you in a book? Um, <laughs> I think you mentioned it. <laughs> Any other questions? Sorry about like this, it's because there's a light right in my eye. It is bright. Yes, uh, yep. My earlier question about bringing characters into the reboot, I actually meant for the 60s TV show of Batman, so I should have made that clear. Uh, my other question. With the film, with the comic book films being all connected um, in the saga kind of thing, and what what's your opinion on that? Is that in your opinion is that a good thing or should it be just standalone films? Sorry, could, could you rephrase it there? Um, are you talking about villains into the continuity? Yeah. Mike. Who oh, isn't it? King Tut probably is just about the only one that I can think of. Mm -hmm. you know? Completely in different world terms. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Gotham villains that aren't in. Like the, from the Batman. Fish Booty, is she not in the books either? In about 1951 or something. Oh, she was there. She's the ancient. <laughs> I think Harvey Bullock's a good character. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. uh, Harvey Bullock's is in the books. No. He's Are a you? big like, deal in the books. So he's he's, he's kind of like has this. Yeah, I guess not. Well, is he a big deal in Gotham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Alfred is a, is a huge deal in Gotham. Al Alfred is. Alfred's a fan favorite, though. He's one of the best characters yeah. in Gotham. It's, 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 is he in a Gotham expert? Yeah. <laughs> he's strangely interested in Doctor Who for some reason. <laughs> Harvey Bullock was in the animated series a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah with, yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 He's there, and, and now he's in Detective Comics, I think. Yeah, so. But I don't know if he's like the same character. That, I don't watch Gotham. I mean, you got you got to remember what, um, one of the things about copyright is that uh, these characters have to be kept alive somehow. So it's quite possible that anybody turns up anywhere. Mm -hmm. The reason for the She-Hulk was not that they thought it was a particularly fascinating idea, but it was to copyright it before somebody else did it. Um, the reason for the death of Captain America was there was a law case with Joe, uh, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby against Marvel, uh, so they had to create another Captain America just in case. So there's always these. Wheels within wheels running in this industry because the industry has to keep churning along, you know. Um, is there another question out there? I thought I saw someone on this side. Oh, yeah. a question. Sorry? Oh, oh yeah. A question. Uh, this was towards both DC and Marvel. Do you don't think there's too many worlds now? The multiverse, or so we'll just go back to the 70s and 80s, one world. The funny thing is, Secret Wars uh, back in uh, the 80s was designed to just have one universe, everything was going to be continuity and blah blah blah, it was all going to be much simpler so it destroyed all the other continuity. And now I don't know how many else we've got. What do you think? Uh, I didn't hear the question. Oh sorry, it, it's about uh, multiple it's universes. It's about the multiple universes between DC and Marvel. And so we'll just go back to the 80s and have one world of each hero. You know, I, with DC I, I find that the, the 52 universes, I like that it's 52 or whatever it is, I think it's 52. Yeah, that's right. But I think to new readers, it can be a little confusing, you know? As, as you enter, you're like, oh, I, know, I like Superman, but he did this thing, but it's actually not this universe. And you're like, what? It's not the same universe? Like, so I, I grew up Marvel, and everything is 616, and it's all in there. And I, I like continuity as a, as a reader. But I think, you know, making these separate universes can be hard for readers to grasp. I love that bit in uh, Big Bang Theory where Penny says to Sheldon, could you get me a Spider-Man comic? And he goes, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099. And she goes, 
you know, just get a Spider-Man comic and he just looks at her. <laughs> what, do, what do you think about all the um, multi multiversity? Well, I, I, I'd stopped reading them by the time they started branching off. Um, Did you like that there was two flashes? Or? No. Well, I, I, well, that comes from Flash of Two Worlds back, yeah, in, back yeah. in the day, which was a terrific story. I like that. I like Jay Garrick and I like... But I, I think they can exist in the same universe. Mm -hmm. I don't need them to, like, live on a different planet and sometimes yeah. see each other, you know? The one of the first DC comics that I read was Crisis. And right. I couldn't make head or tail of it. It's and a, I, yeah, I, it is I confusing. still can't. Yeah. Um, so it, it seems to me that you're appealing to a smaller and smaller, more obsessive fan base. Which but is Crisis was made to clean up. Wasn't but it, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't. And but Secret Wars should have stayed secret. I, I thought. Well, the second one certainly should have. I was, I was talking to Walt Simonson about it, and he says, oh, he says, they gave us all these instructions. He was doing Thor at the time. And he says, I thought, oh, fuck, I'm not bothered with that. So he's one panel where the guy goes off to Secret Wars, and the next panel he comes back. That was, <laughs> um, that was Walt's way of dealing with it. Um, so. I, I think it is confusing. It could could this indeed come back on readership because they just get frustrated and don't know where they are. You know what's interesting is like the Ultimates line is somewhat the pre origin to the, the Avengers movie. That's right? right. And so like now they want to bring that synergy to the six one six universe and have that synergy with the, the Avengers movie, you kinda of have some redundancy. Because this uh, ultimate line originally was becoming the Avengers movie, now you kinda of have we have two black Nick Furies now, and, and, and that's okay, but now I, I wonder if, you know, I think, I don't know, why do we need two, in a sense, you know? Why don't, why don't we just keep one synergy and have everyone, I don't know, I mean, to each their own, I feel like. But to me, I like, I like not to be confused, so I like it all in one area, and I'm a simple reader, maybe. But. There's a brilliant thing in YouTube for them. Um this uh, couple wake up in the night because there's a sound at the door and they get baseball bat and they're in, they go to the door and they open it and it's their son. I go, what are you doing here? I thought you, you left home ages ago. He says, yeah, but there's, there's, there's all these comics coming out. There's uh, the new 52 and this and this. And I, I need a loan of 500 bucks. <laughs> um, it is kind of dear to keep up with comics these days. I mean, there's Wikipedia. Sorry? Wikipedia is the way to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wikipedia misquoted me, so I've fallen out of them. Um, I'm banned from Wikipedia. I saw mine. Yeah. What did you yeah, do? I made up a page for Rod. You made a, a friend of mine. I said he was a short wrangler. He would, uh, had a, a natural and unnatural relationship with a dolphin. And uh, the next time I turned on my computer, it was before I'd even launched Safari. It, uh, there was a message on my screen saying, we've logged your IP address and you're no longer capable to edit Wikipedia page. Brilliant. Is that, is that on your Wikipedia page? Like, my no, no, banned from Wikipedia? It, no. Okay. no, no they, they banned me for plagiarism. I, I copied one of my own essays. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's true. I'll tell you about it later. Uh, do we have a final question, folks? We're going to have to go in about five minutes or less. Yep, it's coming over there. Crossovers between like even like Marvel and DC and you know, like, even things like kind of Scooby Doo and Batman or Dread and Batman. Is there any kind of like um, kind of superhero kind of combos that you'd like to see in a kind of comic between like Marvel or DC or Vertigo or something? I just want to say that I love Perez and Kurt Busiek's uh, JLA Avengers. That's what I grew up with. Yeah. yeah. So, and I love. I kind of grew up on the Perez Avengers that they did. So it kind of led to that. It seems like two years ago. I know. I know. This joke is so. <laughs> no, but I like. I mean, who do I want to see crossover? Yeah. I don't know. That's, I mean, they've all kind of done a lot of them already. Like. The, the, the Judge Dredd uh, Batman was a huge seller. Absolutely. I can't remember what the sales were, but they were enormous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how about New Batgirl and Spider Gwen? That already has a huge cult following online, and they're kind of. And you could draw it. Uh, yeah, please, if you're listening. Now. <laughs> it's another royalty check. Um, and do you have anybody you'd like to see? I mean, even even ones that you thought would be good to draw together. Ooh, um, Garcia Lopez's uh, Batman uh, Hulk was Doctor, absolutely terrific. Well, his Doctor Strange fit that he did with uh, Ron Mars. Did yeah. Marvel comics was incredible. Were you yeah. part of that? Did you do any of that? The, uh, no, I don't think so. 
uh, somebody, when, when Will Eisner was our guest years ago, somebody brought him an old comic and he says to the guy, I'm sorry, but I don't think I had anything to do with this. And, and Will's wife said, yes, you did. You wrote and drew it. <laughs> so it's Mike McCoy universe. Well, uh, thanks very much, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed the convention. It's terrifically busy and, uh, and we're in a wonderful city of which this is a great guide. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'd like you to put your hands together for our two great guests. Thanks very much.